welcome to the definitive guide to how to get clients on LinkedIn right now. In this video, we're going to give you an entire end-to-end -end process and there's going to be some counterintuitive ideas that are going to be very different from a lot of the videos that you will have seen. We'll talk you through how to target qualify prospects by targeting competitor events. Secondly, we'll talk you through how to position and why we've not found it to be a good idea to position as a coach or a consultant or anything around what you actually do. And that will make sense when I cover it. Third point will be how to shift, change and adapt your conversion method depending on your individual offering or service. That's going to be really important because there isn't a one size fits all solution for LinkedIn. And last, as a bonus, we'll show you how to take advantage of the LinkedIn algorithm for your content whilst avoiding the LinkedIn algorithm and all this AI and chat GPT, all this stuff that's come in the feed. So we'll take you through that one by one so that at the end, if you follow this, we'll also screen share on my screen. So number one, how do you target competitor events? Because by the way, competitor events have been the most profitable and consistent way for us to get qualified leads who don't waste time. And the best way to describe it is to talk about the example of Airbnb. If you think about the process of marketing and marketing targeting, marketing targeting 101, broadly speaking, there's two types of marketing targeting. On the first, on one side, you have what is called demographic targeting. And this is what a lot of the videos you will have seen and a lot of the education around LinkedIn. Things like target a CEO of a business, got 11 to 49 people located in a specific geography. They've been in that role for three years and maybe give a keyword about which, I don't know, college they went to. Versus, I, I'm not a fan of this type of targeting because I don't know about you watching this video, I would like to get more qualified leads in less time and that tells me nothing about their intention. A qualified lead would require psychographic targeting or behavioral targeting or maybe another way of putting it to understand their intent. That is to say if they intend to procure or buy a service that's similar to what you do or are they in market. That's the type of targeting I like to use and I'll show you in a minute how to do that on, on LinkedIn. Now, first of all, I want you, you to believe this. So let's just give the example of where we got this from. We got this from actually studying Airbnb. It's in a book there called Blitz Scaling, actually co-authored by Reid Hoffman. And Airbnb, when they got going as a business, the apartment rental company, they didn't have any brand. Nobody knew who they were. They were, they were you know, not flush with lots of money like they are now. I mean, now they're worth billions. So it's, it's, it's a success story. And in theory, if you think about their business, to get going, they could have targeted anybody in the United States. We're talking hundreds of millions of people. Because in theory, academically thinking, anybody that owns an apartment or has a room to rent could potentially have been a client. But that's crazy. That's not a smart way to start a business. And luckily to say, they knew that wasn't a smart way to start a business. Well, what Airbnb figured out is the best way to niche is around someone that's got high intent and high probability to buy your products and service. So they targeted people already listing their properties on Craigslist as vacation rentals. They targeted those and offered them alternative online. So if somebody's already got a property listed for rental, they're going to be a good potential client. Now we took that lesson and we took it to LinkedIn. And what do we do? Well, we target competitor events. We register for all the events where our competitors who sell similar products or services, or even products and services that might not be the same, but that would solve the same problem, we target those events. You can target the LinkedIn events and you can target the audio events. And I'll just show you how to do that right now on the screen. Let me jump over. Let's say I'm targeting something to do with customer retention or staff retention. I just type in the word there. You don't even need the paid version of LinkedIn for this, by the way. And then I would click on events. And there we go, webinar, scaling customer success from retention to expansion. So if I offered any type of service around helping people retain their clients, I would want to register for that. And it's very, very simple. You just open it up and you just go to 
register, submit, boom, in there, and you have access to the LinkedIn profiles of all the 124 attendees. There we go, employee retention. There you are, that'd be a good one for anyone doing that type of work to go to. Now, I wanna be clear, I don't attend all of these events. I don't have that much time. <laughs> don't know about you, got family, commitments, business, but I do reach out and I just connect with them. And we do have a message sequence that I'll show you how to access later on in, in this video. But you could also do the audio events. So that is what I would do in terms of targeting on LinkedIn. All right, number two, how do you position? Because it's all well and good having this list of qualified people, but you know, if you're unable to convert them, if you're still unable to get their attention, if you're still unable to get them into conversations that lead to clients and onto qualified sales calls, then it's just a huge waste of time because 0% of 100 is still a big fat zero. And I don't know about any of you watching this today, I don't like big fat zeros. I like consistent, sustainable lead generation. The number one issue that I can summarize in terms of positioning, do not position yourself as a coach, consultant, CMO, business development rep, anything of that nature. Why? Because the objective of marketplace positioning, and, and there's tons of books that talk about this if you want to read them, I can pull them all off the shelf here, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to summarize right now, right? Is to control the perception of what you do in the marketplace. Because let me elaborate. You probably want someone to take you seriously, perceive you to be valuable. In other words, have the perception that you are a valuable resource that can help them in your business. But if you're leaving that to chance and not controlling the perception that's projected into the marketplace, then it's going to be very, very difficult to do that. So what's the quickest way to make sure that you do not get any success? It's to leave the market to make up the mind on what you do. So let's go back to the example of coach. You might not be a coach, but just take this and apply it to anybody else. If you ask 10 people in the United States or wherever your target market is, what a coach does, the probability is exponentially high because we've done the research, we've tested this, that you will get 10 different answers. Why will you get 10 different answers? It's going to depend on the individual you ask and it's going to depend on their individual experience working with a coach. It's going to depend on the type of coach they hired and there's going to be a plethora of perceptions and variance in that answer. In other words, the marketplace is not, is not understanding what we do in a valuable way. That's not a productive, conducive way to build a business. And more than that, if they had a bad experience, the way that the brain works in order to process information, the information has to enter the mind and then we decide what to do with it and then it exits the mind or we hang on to it. And I'm just gonna prove my point now by saying to you all, don't think of pink elephants. Now, what are you all thinking about? Of course you're thinking of pink elephants because the information has to enter your mind and then exit it. So if someone just hired a coach, just hired a consultant, just hired a CMO, just hired something very similar that could be construed as similar to you, you've immediately eliminated yourself from that, that sales conversation by positioning yourself around a commodity. So here's what to do instead. Position around a Monday morning problem. What's a Monday morning problem? Well, I can tell you what a Monday morning problem is not. A Monday morning problem is not naming yourself over job responsibility like a coach, like I've just said. It's not talking about what you do. Uh, positioning yourself around a Monday morning problem means thinking about your ideal client avatar. Think about what they do on a Monday morning. They've come into the office, they've had a great weekend with friends and family, they sit down all excited for the week. Maybe if like you, 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 me, your, your market is high achievers, they tend to meditate, they tend to do exercise, they get in all excited, they sit down at the desk, they get their keyboard, they open up their inbox, and then they're like, oh, can't believe I'm dealing with that. Boom, that is what you should position around. All right, so let's move on to number three. So what do you do now you've targeted the event and you've positioned correctly and you start a conversation? What do you do? Do you do what everybody else like seems to be teaching, which is to try and get them onto a sales call? I mean, I've been doing LinkedIn for years. I started LinkedIn in 2009. I've been in professional B2B sales since 2003. And over the years, I've seen it like literally LinkedIn. It used to be like, have you got time for a 60 minute call? Then it became a 45 minute call. Then it became a 30 minute call. Then it became a 20 minute call. Then it became a 15 minute call. And the other day I had someone asking me if I wanted to jump on a call for five minutes. The reason it's happening is because the role of the traditional sales call has decreased. There's a lot of data that corroborates this. And it basically says that the sales reps have 5% of a process. Why do the sales reps have less involvement in the process compared to the past? Quite simply, when I started sales in 2003, a salesperson was important. It was really, really important 
for a salesperson to be involved in a process because the potential clients needed to research and understand the nature of what they were buying. They needed to speak to an expert, a trusted advisor. People throw this phrase around. Why is that not needed anymore? Because since the advent of the internet, they can get access to all of the information they need. So instead of inviting them on a sales call, do something left field, do something different that corroborates the data that's working. By the way, this is more profitable than paid advertising for us and invite them to a event. There we go. Change your conversion mechanism and you will be able to grow your business. All right, number four, how do you deal with content? How do you deal with the algorithm? And the advice that I've got here is do what you enjoy and do what works in terms of your strengths. Because in the history of, of planet Earth, <laughs> humanity, nobody behaves consistently in a way that is inconsistent with their belief system and their confidence, right? That, that like, Just think about your life. So why try and go against the current of the river? Why swim against the current? Go with what you enjoy. But equally, we have people that we work with and have worked with and are working with right now. They'll do one minute video, two minute video or short form post. So the most powerful thing you can do on LinkedIn content is to do something that meets your strengths. So use all those steps together and I promise you will be able to grow a business. I hope that has been useful for you. So coming up on the video, there's going to be the whole LinkedIn message sequence there if you want to watch it. Below there is going to be, and if it's not up there, it's going to come up there in a split second. Below there's going to be additional in-depth training where you get to ask me questions on this process. I'll look at your LinkedIn profile. I'll look at your LinkedIn positioning. And yeah, I hope to see you on there. So I just want to say to everybody, have a wonderful day. I hope this has been useful. All right, take care. Bye-bye.